Hey there. Today we're hiding from yet another St. Petersburg snowstorm in this underground car park. What are we thinking about down here? Cars, of course. Anything specifically? What's your favorite type of racing? Rally. That's the thing you do in the forest when you need to empty your bowels. Come on, man, let's be serious here for a minute. Well, there is something I want to find out. Toyota has the GT4, Mitsubishi has its Evolution, Subaru has the WRX STI. As for Nissan, I don't recall them having a rally-inspired machine. What about this thing? Today we'll be reviewing this N14 Nissan Pulsar. But Pulsars are like 1.5 liter front wheel drive. How is this a rally car? Hold up dude, take a closer look. The bumper looks interesting. It has an intercooler, a hood scoop, some hood vents, some hood vents, mild fender flares, and a spoiler. Is that what makes it a rally car? I'll take it a step further. This thing has all-wheel drive and an SR20 DET with individual throttle bodies and 230 horsepower stock. The Pulsar only weighs like 1,300 kilos. Well, that's the point. So this can demolish an Evolution, a WRX and anything else we know. This car was produced from 1990 up until 1994 for Nissan to be eligible for a WRC competition. To do that, they had to make around 5,000 cars each year which allows us to assume that they made about 20,000 of these. 1,000 of those were left-hand drive. They called them Sunny GTIRs. Of those 1,000, 600 were produced for the German market. It's worth noting that the European Sunny GTIRs received a slightly detuned version of this SR20 DET making 220 horsepower, presumably due to the Japanese doubting the quality of European fuel. The JDM version, however, made 230 horsepower. There should be an intercooler up here, but this car has a front mount conversion. This scoop was made for the top mount intercooler. The intake manifold has four throttle bodies, one for each cylinder. The block and head on this engine are cast aluminum. So if this motor fails, you can earn a ton of money by selling it for scrap metal. The interior in this car is quite basic. There aren't a lot of features in here. The seats are correctly profiled and very comfortable. And they firmly hold you in place when you're jumping around in the forest. You also got a nice three-spoke steering wheel with thumb bolsters, an array of factory gauges, boost pressure, oil temperature, and oil pressure. In terms of features, this car has power mirrors and windows, a simple HVAC unit with AC, just like in any other Japanese car. Despite rear seats being unnecessary in a car like this, this one still has them. And they ain't too bad. You have sufficient legroom and even a bit of headroom. And a little something for the housewives. If you are a housewife and you drive a rally car to go get groceries, this thing even has a trunk. Cargo volume isn't bad, but the strut tower brace might get in your way. Do a fade to black. The GTIR wasn't particularly well equipped, but it did have two interesting features. The first of those is a wristwatch with the GTIR logo on it, and the second one is an umbrella, just like on a Rolls Royce. However, Nissans aren't Rolls Royces, and the umbrella on this one has disintegrated. <laughs>
Okay, so we're finally in the car. I suggest we do some hard driving right off the bat. This car feels very planted, and the handling is just... This is really frightening. It's very fast and super stiff. That works, right? Very fast and super stiff. Let's try that again. This car is quite compact and short. The handling is very direct, and the steering ratio is quick. And it's all-wheel drive. It has phenomenal grip. Even on this sort of road surface, all-wheel drive is always such a joy in this kind of weather. Make that an all-wheel drive car with decent driving dynamics. You've got yourself a real winner. This has a short throw gear shift adapter. And the gearbox itself is a close ratio unit. This car goes like hell. Go for it. We'll prove that in a second. Holy shit! That was 1.12 bar of boost pressure. I probably shouldn't have said that. That's as far as it goes now. Is that normal? Or is it just that the weather is warm? It might be a faulty boost solenoid. This car came stuck with Nissan's Atessa all-wheel drive system and a limited slip diff in the back. Which means on some occasions you can take a turn sideways. But we really shouldn't experiment in this sort of weather. Yeah, because we could end up hitting a lamppost. Or a curb or something. Wouldn't want to hit a curbstone. They have different names for that in different areas. Or a bear if we were in the outer regions of Russia. Want to try again? God damn! I reckon on 1.2 bar, this thing is making around 300 horsepower, given that stock boost is 0.7. This thing is so fast, it's actually scary. This is a pretty long patch of road, but it still isn't enough. Another quick go. God damn! Three and a half thousand revs in fifth gear is like... It's okay, dude. We just flew over it at speed. <laughs> did you see that? I did. That was like a manhole without a cover. Yeah, I saw it. And we just flew right over it. Whoa, 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 dude! What's wrong with you? Did you see that hole? I thought we were done. <laughs> We probably shouldn't show this to the owner. I don't think we should. Of course not. Despite this being an interesting car from a technical standpoint, Nissan had to cease production in 1994 due to their lackluster performances and rally. As for us, we really liked the car. We've achieved quite a lot with it today. We had a good time ripping around. So yeah, this car is fantastic. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Bye.